into a little bit of everything as a kid. Uh, I don't know, man, everything, art, you know, uh, sketching, any and everything. I tried everything as a kid, and, and my parents kept me in, into everything. Sports, you know what I'm saying, baseball, basketball, all of that. Nice. Yeah, I was good. Okay. I was good. You know, I was on um, pitcher, first base. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a little coaching uh -oh. for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Youth League, stuff like that? Yeah, 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 coach the Youth League. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole nother life, though. Okay. Whole nother life. But um, yeah, music. I don't know. I I really gravitated towards it. Um, you know, my parents would buy me different instruments and just leave me with it. Like at a very young age, you know, they oh. they like five, six, seven. You know, they buy a harmonica, and I'd have a song in like five, six minutes. You know, and they were like, "Wow, like how does that happen?" You know, so so they pushed that. Um, my father actually before he passed bought me. A uh, little little toy organ. Mm -hmm. He played organ. He was a doctor by trade, but he played he played organ, you know, and drums in the church. So he taught me a few chords on that. After he passed, I felt like it was a way to keep a, a part of him with me by continuing on, you know. And after a while, I was a quiet kid, so I didn't feel comfortable talking to people about, you know, a, a, about things. I would learn how to put emotions into music. Definitely, my parents raised me on some good music. They kept the good music in the household. The Motown, you know, the jazz, Roy Ayers. Mm -hmm. Freddie Hubbard, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Um, in my city, man, you know, um, Detroit is definitely home to a lot of different genres of music. So inspiration comes from a lot of different, a lot of different places out there. You know, I still draw inspiration from the city, from the seasons. You know what I'm saying? All of that comes into play when it's time to create. I'll sit down at the rows, I'll bang out a couple chords, beatbox, and I don't know mumble off some words that don't make any sense, you know, and if, mm -hmm. it, if it feels good, if it feels right, then I'll go back and, and create the, the, the sound, you know, fully and swap out the mumbles for actual words, you know, and, and, and let the concept build from there. I mean, sometimes it can start with a lyric and I'll build around that lyric, but, you know, most of the time it starts with, with the rolls and the beatbox. Ah, favorite instrument. Yeah, it would be between the rolls and the flugelhorn. Tell me, what is the flugelhorn? Yeah, flugelhorn is like, it's, it's like a trumpet. It's, it's, it's set up like a trumpet with the three keys. But uh, it's a little bit fatter, mm -hmm. as opposed to a trumpet that's more skinny. Um, and it's a it's a warmer sound. It's like a warm trumpet. I use oh. it on a lot. Like like a lot of the recent stuff is uh is flugel horn. Swank off of the last album is, mm -hmm. is flugel. You know um yeah. Once I got a flugel, I rarely used the trumpet. So what was it like working with Jay Dilla? Oh man, Dilla was crazy, man. Dilla was. One of those people always say Dilla with the MPC was like a a, 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 court, a courtroom stenographer. You know, you you see them in there, and they they're doing this, taking all the minutes. That's how Dilla was. You would just see his hands moving, and, and it's like you can't. He doesn't move slow enough for you to pick up what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? I saw him make a beat in like three minutes, like a ridiculous beat that you know that Janet Jackson would have bought. You know what I'm saying? In, right. in, in three minutes, and it was unbelievable, man. He was definitely um he was definitely a force in music. Slum Village was my end into the industry. You know, I was signed with um, with Virgin in 2000. Uh, I think we did the the, the Tainted song mm -hmm. in 2001, 2002. I think it was 2002. Mm -hmm. And from that Tainted Tainted song, that that kind of moved my uh my my company at the time, which was Virgin. You know what I'm saying? My record company. It moved them to push to to to, uh, to push my record out because uh, what record was that? <clears throat> uh subject the first record that was your first record yeah subject was the first record okay okay and virgin was sitting on it for about two two and a half years until wow. until the tainted came out and they was like okay people like them let's move on this okay and so now so now across cross over the creative side to you just as being a black man in music mm -hmm. tell me about that what keeps you where you are what keeps you grounded tell me about um that. first and foremost family mm -hmm. you know definitely family <laughs> reminds you like you just my little cousin, boy. Don't act up, you know what I'm saying? So, 
You know, I mean, definitely family keeps me grounded, man. And um, I hang around, you know, grounded people, you know, so, hey, it's me every day, all day, every day. <laughs>